Hey, welcome to another show. I wanted to give you a quick opener commercial and tell you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash design recharge. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from, from your iPhone, Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. Now let's on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 318 and I'm here with my girls in Alabama and Sam. Sam's not in Alabama, <laughs> but when, it was Sam, you're in my, a cold state. It starts with an M. Yeah, Minnesota. We just got snow the other day. Oh my mm. gosh. I know. <laughs> it yeah. snows here like once every eight years. <laughs> and it, we go crazy <laughs> and it's like this much. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, super, super awesome. All right, so we have so much to cover today. And what I want to get across is that there are pros and cons of working remotely. Um, I just kind of want to give you the background. Allie, she has two remote jobs, and she actually works with Sam on a remote job. She works uh, for Design Cuts all the way in England. Mm -hmm. um, and she actually goes there part for six weeks some time amount of time she goes here and so she's in the office and then sam is in minnesota and he also he works at state of assembly with uh one of my friends karina and it's in portland and Allie also does some does some time there it sounds like she's in prison oh, <laughs> <laughs> and louise is working remotely for a company that's really spread out Where's the base? Austin? San Diego? Um, they have one in Austin now. They have one in San Francisco. It started in Paris. So they have a couple. couple Paris. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but she's actually worked in, in a in work environment, two work environments. So this is a, a chain for doing that. And then Suzanne has also worked in a, in, I don't know what you call that, in office environment, <laughs> and then wor was working part-time with that and then part-time remotely and then went full-time remote and has been doing that for probably the longest of anybody here, right? I don't know. It's been uh, like three years almost, I think, a veteran. or a little over three years. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to dig in. I want everybody to kind of give a little bit of their... Um, their role at like what their title is maybe and then what if they're full-time how long they've had their job and a little bit about your design education or your background and the types of jobs you had before this one so Suzanne we're going to start with you since you already said three years okay yeah so um I work at Retro Supply and I've been there for th almost three and a half years and um I think my <laughs> title officially is senior product creator but my role kind of spans over that uh it's actually uh i do a lot like i don't even know if because really um anyway i started part-time with dustin and i guess it was like that for a year and then i went on full-time um but, but previously i was splitting my time with him and a small ad agency locally and your design background? Oh, um, yes. I went, I got a degree from University of South Alabama. Okay. Okay. All right. All the girls here are mine. Okay. I'm just coming clean with that. Okay. So, Allie. Yes. Um, I went to school at South Alabama. After four years, I graduated. I pretty soon after started doing part-time freelance work with Design Cuts. Um, that was two and a half years ago, two years ago. Um, I asked to go full-time, so I started going full-time. After that, I went in-house for three months in the beginning of my full-time. So I was in England for three months, which was pretty cool. Um, then I came home, I got a puppy, and uh, I around the time that I went to England, I started working with Karina. And she gracefully, like graciously, was just kind of like, "Look, I understand you're in a whole other continent now." And um, there was an eight-hour time difference, I think, between us at the time. So we kind of worked together before, and then we picked back up when I got back. So I've been working with her for over a year now, too. And um, yep, just doing some freelance on the side. So I'm full time with Design Cuts, part time 
freelancing with Karina and then a couple of other people. Okay. All right. And now Louise, we're going to save the best for last, Sam, right? <laughs> Um, so I am a full-time communications designer with Platform SH, um, and I work on everything from like branding materials to social media to websites, pretty much the whole, the whole thing. Um, but before that, um, I was a student of Diane's. I graduated with Suzanne, um, and I have worked everywhere from a big corporation in-house as a designer, um, and also small, um, design agencies, um. Yeah, so just a variety of different experiences. Now I'm remote. So. And it wasn't always in Alabama. You moved to Denver. Yeah. Okay. So I worked in Denver for a while. All right, Sam. Yes. Uh, so I went to school at Hennepin Tech. Actually, I started out going to Minnesota School of Business. If you heard of that, it was really bad. It was a lot of money. It kept <laughs> me up at nights. So I went to like a local technical college and I didn't finish because I got married. Uh, and then I worked at a trucking company for a while. I worked on the dock because I needed like a $12 an hour job. Um, so but you studied rent. some. You took a couple of classes yeah. in design, right? Yeah, I probably went to school for like over the course of two years. Um, and I was always drawing and trying to like make logos for bands and stuff. Um, but yeah, I worked at that trucking company. And then I knew I had to get out of there because I was a lot of bad years. Um, then I got a job at a print shop and then I started listening to podcasts and stuff like this, reached out to Diane and then she hooked me up with Karina and now I'm a junior designer. So it's mostly like print and web design ads, but nothing too major, but it's a really small company. So I feel like I get to really collaborate with them and with the clients. Right. Okay, so Sam, you're the next question. You made a serious sacrifice. Uh, obviously, we're not saying that the girls didn't, but but you no. actually, because they did. You all make sacrifices, but you made a sacrifice by to pursue design, which I was really impressed with. You were doing a ton of stuff on the side while you were doing the trucking company, which was not design related at all, right? No, I was a dispatch supervisor. It was horrible. Okay. I don't it's, even know what that is, right? <laughs> Working, um, it's babysitting man children over the phone. Oh. That's, that's all it is. It's oh. a bunch of complainers. <laughs> okay, so then I was like, hey, um, so why was it so, because I was like, okay, let's see if we can get, because your portfolio was good. I'd never met Sam. I still have never met Sam. Except we just talked on the computer. Um, but what, this was kind of a big dis step for you. And why was it important to take it now? Because a lot of times people like, Suzanne was in school and then she was out of school and came back to school. Louise was a little bit older as a student. I think Allie was the one that was the most normal age <laughs> kid. <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> um, man, I don't know. I kept seeing like my friends getting careers and I think somebody else turned me on to the Perspective Collective podcast. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, like, the only thing I can remember Scotty saying is, like, you got this. I'm like, man, why am I, like, wasting all this time just wallowing and, oh, my job sucks. Like, why don't I do something about it? So my original plan was just to eventually transition to freelance full time. But I don't know. I felt like reaching out to you was kind of like, well, let's really kickstart this and see if I can just get even a part time gig. Yeah. So, but it... But it was something, you knew there was going to be things you had to learn. You knew you might have to take a step back because you weren't making $12 an hour anymore. You were making a lot more at the trucking company. And so. Oh, yeah. Good salary. Right. So, but then there was something that you, we, that was one of the biggest sacrifices that because you were kind of starting over, you had to be kind of, you not kind of, you had to be trained, right? But you knew you had a lot of good skills and there was definitely, you were easy to work with. All right, so we're going to jump into the next question. I think, well, Allie could t attest, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is for Allie and Louise. Um, you both work with people in other countries. Uh, how do you manage, and hey, Dave Clayton, Dave Clayton's here from England. Um, how do you manage, not Dave, but y'all, how do you manage, <laughs> hmm, how do you manage different time zones? Uh, Louise. Um. 
So I, I feel like um, you have to be a little bit flexible uh, when you're working remotely with other people in other countries. Um, so maybe you have to take a meeting like a little bit earlier or a little bit later than your working hours. Generally, it's not it's not too bad. Um, but the main thing that um, I've really found is important is to when you need feedback to take into account the time it's going to take for them to respond. Um, so like one of my coworkers is in Australia and I communicate with her a lot, but if I need immediate feedback, I need to take into account. She probably won't see what I need for 12 hours. So um, yeah, that's the, that's the biggest thing really for me. All right. So Allie, what about you? So you're, you get up a little bit earlier, so you, you have more time when they're also working and then you, because Karina's two hours later, it helps because then you can kind of have yeah. a little bit as you're splitting your time because you work more than eight hours a day. Yeah, I think um, the flexibility is really important as a remote worker because we were able to kind of work around our schedule and like work around creativity, which is one of the big pros. Uh, it also means that you have to be flexible. And if someone gives you feedback, like Karina is two hours behind me. So I wake up, I used to try to wake up way earlier, but then I was just like, I, I can't keep this up. I, like too much coffee, not enough. So <laughs> I started waking up around like seven. So I, I wake up at seven and I just kind of grab my cup of coffee and I just wake up with the computer, which not everybody can do, but I do. Um, so I wake up and I work seven to 11 is 5 p.m. for them. So I have a good half day with my creative director. So all the feedback, I usually am able to do it during that time. And then I make sure to like discuss with him. There's just a lot of communication. So it's like, hey, whenever you log off, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And it's usually something we've already agreed upon. And so all the time that I do in the afternoon when he's not there is usually the time that I do something that doesn't need feedback until the next day. So just a lot of communication and a little bit of flexibility. So we're going to talk about communication in a second, but Allie, I'm going to ask you one more question. Okay. So how are you managing working for one, uh, for more than one remote job? Because Louise has one job. Suzanne has one job. I know Louise does some freelance. Suzanne does some freelance, but they're off, off hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, on the weekend. Sam, do you do freelance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but I've definitely... But you have the one job with, with Karina, right? State of Assembly. Mm -hmm. So, so Allie, how are you, how do you kind of juggle? Because I think time and uh, me making sure you're giving your time to these other things. And are you, you know, you're, you have to put 40 hours in at design cuts, but then right. your clients, are you billing those as, uh, or Karina, it's also hours. It's hourly probably. base. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's tough. It, it can be tough. In the beginning, it was more tough as I was like learning to put everything on my plate and figuring out um, I'm a people pleaser for sure. So whenever someone gives me a project, I want to always be yes, 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 yes. And I've had to learn, especially like uh, outside of my full-time job with Karina to just be like, hey, when is this due? Um, how many hours do you think it's going to take? And, you know, when is the hard and fast deadline? How like is there feedback involved? I've just had to be more inquisitive. Um, and I've started mm -hmm. doing another freelance job. So it's really just being really upfront whenever um, outside of design cuts, because that one's my full-time one. So with Karina and then with Leslie, I'm just very upfront and I'm like, hey, where is this in my priority list? And where is it in yours? And that usually helps me kind of align my day and week. Nice. And get things done. <laughs> So for everybody, how are you balancing your hours? So Sam, you kind of have it interesting because you want to eat lunch with your wife, which I think is super sweet. So can you kind of yes. tell us, because you get up and you, can you kind of give us mm -hmm. a little bit of your schedule because your wife's a nurse? Yeah. So there'll be lots of days where she'll work evenings or, you know, during the week or during the weekend. Um, so yeah, I kind of try and plan like around her schedule, but we're pretty cool with each other. You know, if I know she's going to be off the next day, I can say, Hey, I'm working on this pitch deck, like, and it's due that evening. So just ignore me for the day. But yeah, usually I wake up around like eight or nine, do something personal, maybe like make breakfast or do a drawing and then start work from like 10. And then I don't know. I like being able to just like walk away from an hour. If I just 
need to refresh or like go play with my cat or something. Mm -hmm. And then usually work until about six or seven because then they're done at five. And I know that's like the last bit of response I can get from Karina. Gotcha. And then sometimes if I need to, I'll come back on at like 10 o'clock, nine o'clock to wrap something up. Yeah. Just to make sure you're meeting that deadline. Does anybody else like Mm -hmm. uh, Louise or Suzanne, do you have anything where you're kind of doing weird hours or do you really get to keep like normal sort of business hours for your job? Louise? I get to keep pretty normal business hours. Um, I try to keep on a schedule, um, not a set schedule, but a a flexible one where I'm like getting up at the same time every morning and like eating breakfast at the same time because otherwise I'll like start working and I'll look up and it's one o'clock and I haven't taken a shower yet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. If I don't do that, it just gets a little, a little crazy. Um, But I I work pretty normal business hours um, for the most part. So what about you, Suzanne? Yeah, I stick to um, a pretty strict to myself schedule of um, being at the computer at eight. Um, I have gotten in the habit of just eating my lunch at my desk because it's just, there's usually just stuff going on, right, when I'm getting hungry. So, um, but then, you know, if I have everything wrapped up at five, I like to shut it down because I have to like make those boundaries because I do work at home um, that or else work would consume me. <laughs> I mean, I do freelance in the afternoons, you know, but none of those are really on um, like super strict deadlines. So I usually shut it down, cook myself dinner, and then like I'll throw on some Netflix and do the freelance stuff. But I try and keep uh, work in this room. I leave this room and um, try and not think about it. <laughs> so one of the other things I think Suzanne does that are, because you've worked the longest, you've done the remote the longest, you actually really would say, okay, well, I have a yoga thing that starts at five thirty or six so that you, it would m- make you go. And it was the one some of the only times that you were getting out of the house and your husband works out of town. Some mm-hmm. nights, if anybody's yeah. stalking her, he's there <laughs> lots of time. Um, I don't want to be like, <laughs> where does she live? <laughs> but um, but there, so you could work throughout the night if you wanted to, um, because you don't have anybody else that's there ho- holding your, you know, feet to the Netflix or something. Right. But so why is it important to to have that exercise? I know Louise got a dog. Allie has a dog. I mean, you have cats. Yeah. Sam has cats. Yeah. Um, well, for me personally, and I do, I don't, I hope, I don't enjoy exercising. I'm not, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like get fired up about it or anything, but I do it because I know that I need to. I'm working, I'm sitting more than eight hours a day. Um, and so that, and it keeps me just on a schedule. I do classes. So I don't go to the gym and do like weights. I don't know what I'm doing. I'd probably hurt myself. So I have to go to classes. Also classes have like the peer pressure aspect. So you're like, everybody else is doing this many reps. I have to too, you know? So anyway, I think it it just helps me keep like a more balanced schedule um, and and keep myself healthy. (laughs) Yeah. Mentally and physically, yeah. Right, and then it's interaction with other people, and you're not talking to strangers at yes. the grocery store, right? Right. right. <laughs> not that that would be bad, but uh, this one's to you. You're going to start this one off. I would like to ask everybody this, but Suzanne, since you've worked um, the longest, you really went. You could have stayed at the other, the in-person agency, mm-hmm. um, if you had wanted to. But why, at that time, why did you choose to do a full-time remote? Um, really, it was just that I liked working at Retro Supply better. It was more my vibe. I'm not, uh, I mean, making logos and stuff was kind of what I was doing at the other job. And it wasn't like on a really cool, serious scale. It was like, literally the last per- the last logo I did, they wanted a mullet, which I, not the hairdo, but the fish with a mullet hairdo. Oh. I mean, you can't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
but it was like something that I had to do, you know, in a day and then so here you go, you know, I don't know. So I, I just liked the work better. And then also, um, I'm not from Mobile and um, as much as I love it, I don't like his, have never had intentions of staying here for a super long time. So I liked the idea and the possibility of being able to um, move where I wanted to and still have my same job and do what I have enjoyed doing. So that was really attractive to me. And I know we didn't have to say it when you said mullet with a mullet, but we are in Alabama. Yeah. I just want to remind you. <laughs> yeah. Well, minus Sam. Yeah. Anyway, not everybody has a mullet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the question is, and Suzanne, I still want to get you to ask this. What, is there any specific questions that you would ask if you were interviewing now for a remote position that you didn't know to ask before? Um. So one question now I would know to ask, at least for a full time, or no, I mean, this happens part time too, is um, like pay scale, like um, do y'all take into account where I live for my pay? So um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, like that's a question, say, hey, if I were to move to New York City, for example, you know, I don't want to live in New York City, but that's a high dollar place to live for the most part. Um, would my pay like reflect where I live? I mean, maybe it would, but probably not. But you know, you just—I think that's good to know. I'm sure some places would be willing to like work with you on on that. Yeah, that is a really good question. I don't know what I would think. Mm. Probably not. I mean, yeah. if they're in New York and you're in New York, yes, right. I think they get it because they understand. But I would think that most people would say no. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Allie, what about you? What questions would you ask now? Because you have two remote jobs. Um, and then we'll uh, go to Louise and then Sam, just so you guys can be prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was hoping I was going to be lost, but I guess <laughs> <laughs> I think what's really good is, uh, to just go in and be open about who you are with them. Like, I think in the beginning I was so scared. I was just out of school and I was just out of school and I hadn't entered the job world at all. Like there was no past experience. That was it. And so I, my people pleasing came in and I wanted to just be the ideal employee and so I, I wanted to come across as like I know what I'm doing I don't have a ton of questions and I still struggle with those doubts especially like you don't want to come across as not knowing what you're doing but I think it's better to ask questions up front so when it comes to projects if you're confused in any way just ask um so I, I initially I would probably be like okay when we're going in you know what is the room for growth if you're starting out part-time, like, is there an option for this to be full-time? Is it going to grow in any way? Or am I really just kind of helping you out freelance-wise? That's cool, too. It's just knowing what your expectations are going in. Um, I would say, how often do you want to meet? How are we going to meet? Is it just going to be, like, you and I chatting through a computer screen? Or am I going to see your face at all? Because I think that helps. Because I'm a person where if I can look at someone, I feel a lot less, like more comfortable. And I feel more comfortable asking questions and being more inquisitive than just pinging them a ton of questions through a chat. So those would probably be the ones that I would start out with. I do think communication is going to be huge here. I also like to see people's faces. Go figure. That's why I do this as a video. Um, I think, Suzanne, you like that kind of you like being able to see Dustin's mm -hmm. face, right? Mm -hmm. um, Sam, I think y'all do most of yours via a call-in. Like you call, you're not mm -hmm. looking at her face. No, Google Hangouts. But it's kind of sad. But just <laughs> audio. Yeah, just audio. Okay, and then Louise, what about you? Um, we have a ton of meetings during the week on Google Hangouts. Um, a lot of people choose to not show their face. I think it's like the default. Um, but so, sometimes we do, um, but we also, um, we meet once a year, every year, like the whole company. Um, we're about to have it at the summit again. So um, it's kind of cool to meet people, even the new people that you haven't met yet. Um, it's cool to see them in person. 
Yeah. So, so we'll get to that because Sam, you have an experience really recent where you got to go to Portland and you got to hang out. I just want to, so Dave in the chat, he's like Dave Clayton. He said, I work two days at the office and three days remote at home and for the same company, uh, but also spend 24 hours a month over those eight journeys per month. My salary reflects his travel costs in that the commute, that's 24 hours a month driving on the commute. So it must be a long way away, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we know how far y'all commute from the bed <laughs> to the office, right? Sometimes yeah. I commute to London though. So. That's right. But they do pay for that, right? Yeah, it was figured into uh, salary, kind of. I was, it was a discussion that was had. So if you are having to do that and you're having to go, mm. always talk about it. And don't be afraid to talk about it because if it's costing you more money, that's not cool. Right. Okay, so going back to the questions in um, an interview. So, Louise, you've had in person, multiple in person jobs, three design jobs in person, right? Yeah. Um, and Tara, my best friend, was one of your bosses. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just have to plug her there. <laughs> um, and she was in Denver. And so she, that you had that, and then you had another. Um, in-person job mm -hmm. and then you went remote what were some questions you we talked about this in the pre whatever uh, the test one but can you kind of tell what what you really your experience was in your interview process or what you would tell somebody to ask I think with uh, interviews in general, not just remote, I think you, um, and it's hard to do when you're just a new designer starting out because you really just want a job, um, but you really need to figure out if the company is going to be a good fit for you too. Um, so you want to ask questions to kind of get a feel for what it's going to be like to work there. Um, remote specifically, like reiterating Ali's point about communication, how do you communicate, how often? Um, how many hours, what are working hours like? Do I need to bill hours? Um, what are deadlines like? What's an example of a deadline? Um, things like that. Um, another question I just thought of, because um, Allie was talking about uh, the trip to London, um, specifically for full-time, I guess, versus contractors, is um, will you, if you're work, if, for a remote job, if are you providing the tools I need for my job? Are you providing my computer, my software, mm. stuff like that? Um, so yeah, you want to interview them to find out if it's a good fit as much as as much as they're interviewing you, I feel like. So let's ask that real quick before everybody. Just raise your hand if they provide you a computer. <laughs> Louise. Ooh, the Louise. only one that <laughs> she, she asked the, only, the question. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, and then out of all of you, who has healthcare? Louise again. Damn, Louise, let me get yeah. that application. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so as you were looking for a job, was one of the things that you were looking for something that was remote so that you could could uh, move and live where you wanted to, or was that something that just because it was a good fit for you at that place? Um, it was a little bit of both. Um, I was wanting to break into more um, digital work and it, it's a tech company. So I get a lot of experience in that. So that was part of it. But a big part of it was I was looking for a, a different environment. Um, the last environment I was in was very high stress. Um, and I was looking for something that was more calm, a little bit more work-life balance. Um, while I'm also still kind of uh, learning, um, trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been really great and it's been really great for my personality. Um, I'm an introvert. So whenever I worked in an office, I was so drained when I came home. I just wanted to come home and stare at the wall and do nothing. Um, and now I like go to exercise classes during the day. Like it, it's been, it's been really good. So I recommend it if you're an introvert for sure. All right. So, um, so, so retro supply is its own kind of product. Allie, you, it's kind of an in-house. And then I guess with yours as well, it's kind of in-house, right? Yeah, uh, Louise? In -house, yeah. So then Allie and Sam work some where it's, you're, you're not doing just in-house. You're not just working for that one company. You're doing client. You're, they have clients of their own and you're doing work for those people, right? Mm -hmm. Just trying yeah. to paint the picture. Okay, Sam. What would you ask in an interview now you know that you wouldn't have known in the beginning? 
Yeah. After listening to you guys, um, <laughs> I would, I've got some questions now. Uh, but yeah, really, like, how do you want me to keep track of my time? How many, like, logged hours do you need? Am I going to get paid, like, on a salary type basis, hourly or project? What does PTO look like, benefits? And then are you going to provide the hardware and the software? I guess those would be my big ones. But yeah, like uh, Luis kind of said, I was just so excited to get that job. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> Karina is awesome. <laughs> She is awesome. So, so with PTO means paid time off, just in case, because Fred's in high school. So I just want to make sure we're not using things that any, somebody might not know what it is. So if you can hold up a hand with however many weeks you have off uh, included. Two, you get four weeks, Allie, Hold on. paid. Holy cazoli. Um, England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. So Louise has I to get two hands out, people. Yeah. Healthcare, like computer. Or something. Or 20, I can't remember. It's 22, 23, something like that for me. Okay. And then, so Suzanne gets two. Sam? Uh, I don't know. We're, we kind of just like play it by ear. I've always just told Karina, hey, I'm leaving for a week to go into the wilderness. She's like, okay, that's cool. And then, oh, I'm actually coming to Portland the day I get back. Cool. Take some time off while you're here to explore. Okay. So. But then... She's pretty chill. But is that paid? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she covered those days. I didn't have to adjust my invoices. Hmm. Okay. So, so, paid to month? Yeah, totally. So, what What would be... So, uh, Louise, I never would have asked this question before Louise's last job. And so she taught me to ask this question. And so it was about how many billable hours do you do? Do you have to do a day? Now that you're working in house, you don't have as, the same sort of thing. Like uh, Suzanne yeah. doesn't have billable hours and, um, and neither does Louise. Um, Allie with design cuts, you don't have billable hours, right? No. Yeah. You're not billing it to somebody else, not like you're a lawyer or a designer that's working. So Sam, how many billable hours are you expected to have a day? Uh, well, it's more based on the week. That was outlined in the contract pretty clearly for 40. And then she said that you don't have to work 40, but that's what's expected. So yeah, we kind of just like play it by ear. Like if revisions come in at like seven o'clock, I'll say, hey, does this need to get done tonight or can it wait till tomorrow? And so then, what I what I mean by billable hours, I might not have been as clear. So I'm sorry. Hmm. So billable hours is not emails. It's only stuff that you can bill a client. So uh, you can't go, you can't do any emails. Emails aren't included. That's just part of your job, but you can't really bill that to a specific job or client. Um, there's other hmm. things that are kind of like you have to go to the bathroom in that hour, like Look, let me just say, most places it's like six hours are expected to be billable in an eight-hour day. Louise had to do mm. eight, so she had to stay oh there gosh. a lot longer. We're glad she's working in a great place. <laughs> so so do you understand horrible. what I mean about billable hours now? Uh, so did Karina ever say to you, hey, I want at least six of these hours that you're working. I want to be able to bill those out to a client. Uh, no, nothing like that has been established. I mean, she does say, like, just make sure you're being accurate and timely because we have to show that to our clients. And as long oh. as I'm delivering stuff and I'm available when she needs me, you know, we're cool. That's a perfect opportunity to tell people about Timely. And I'll put a commercial in here. <laughs> um, but so let's, at, let's talk about that. So um, we're going skipping one and then we'll go back. Um, how do you track your hours? I'm going to go around Robin. Allie, we're going to start with you. Okay. So for design cuts, I just, I, I did work in house for three months. So I kind of knew the, their working environment. And I think that's important. Um, if you're able to do that, if you're able to like commute in and work with them and see the way that your boss works and the office works and the people, your peers work. I think that's helpful when, and especially in a full-time situation because um, I know that it's not a super high stress environment. I know that design cuts is like it. We're of course wanting to get things done and be productive, but it's, it's more like family oriented and 
there's talking going on. It's not like a, a drill sergeant situation where you don't leave your desk and you don't have lunch and you don't do this. No time to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't worry about my billing hours with my bathroom breaks um, or the loo as they call it. So I just log on at a certain time and then I, I sit and work the way that I would in the office until those hours are done. And then do you keep track I, of your hours somehow. I'm not with design cuts just because it it's more, I would say on a peer basis. If I step away from the computer, I do clock that. Uh, I use Slack with all my freelance and with design cuts. So in my own little chat, I'll like time punch. So like, I'll just message mm-hmm. myself and I'll be like, in or out or I'll put a time and be like this and then so with Karina's work I definitely do that um when I start a project I'll put the time and then I'll put like the project name and that's how I kind of clock in and out of myself and whenever I go to build those hours I can just kind of add everything up because it's right there in the chat boy did did Sam give me a good opening for this commercial so timely is the app I use on my computer to track my Uh, time. You can also, there's an app on your phone too. Um, It has a memory option, which we are going to talk about in a minute, which remembers what you've been doing. And if you're like me, I can't remember how many hours I spent on a certain project. No problem. Because Timely will remember for me so that I don't have to. When you sign up for Timely via this link, link down below, you'll be able to receive a 10% discount once you activate your subscription. But Timely wants to make sure that you are you try it before you buy it. And they give you 14 days before you have to activate your subscription. That's two weeks to try it out and see if it's for you. <laughs> so, but Allie, you don't use that because you're more contract. You don't use Timely. She doesn't have you on she a Timely thing. told me thing. about Timely, but I, I didn't want to pay for it. Yeah, but she <laughs> pays for it. So she uh, We didn't just... talk about it between us. So. Okay, well, maybe it's a I don't use Timely. Should have. <laughs> okay, so Sam, tell them about tell them why you like. Do you have the stalker option as a in yours? Uh, stalker. Nope. It's called memory, but it knows what oh, you're doing. Oh, and then if you're like, yeah. oh, I forgot, how many hours did I spend on that project? And it's yeah, stalking you during your day. I love it. You love mm-hmm. it. it. Shows like your Spotify and stuff like that too. Although yeah, if you know. ignore it, Ooh. it won't show up again. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, oh God, I wasted time on that. Yeah. I don't um, like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it works pretty well and they're updating it like constantly. So like just today they did an update where now it uh breaks down sketch and it shows which sketch files you're actually working in, which is nice. Because I can't tell you how many days I had to like manually split up things because it just showed one eight hour block. I was of in sketch. sketch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's helpful. <laughs> like thanks, timely. Um so yeah, that's kind of nice, but then it's not like insanely accurate too. Let's but... not say anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. No, I. Okay. Uh, but no, I. I've but they're improving to the... it all the time. They are. It is getting better. And like, if you email them, like a real person will talk to you, and then someone else will follow up, and they'll be like, "So, do we like meet your expectations? Like, how's everything going? Still, we really need your feedback." It's like, whoa, calm down. Because, well, for me, as I've tried different time tracking, I've done some free ones, I've done paid. Um, and for me, this the stalker option is the best because I forget. And But it tells mm-hmm. me who I was sending emails to, it was telling me what programs I was on and what projects I was working on. You were working on this at this. But, so I love that part. Okay, uh, Louise, mm-hmm. what do you have to do? Is it just uh, an yeah, honor system? Yeah. Yeah, it's real. I mean, we don't have to, I don't have to technically bill hours. It's more just like we keep track of the projects we're working on. Um, I'm on a pretty small team. There's like three of us. So um, we, we don't really have to bill hours, but I have been in jobs where you have to like literally start a timer when you're starting a project. And if you stop that project and start another one, you have to start another timer. So um, I'm glad it's not that complicated. So nobody with ADHD can work at that company. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bing, oh, oh yeah. I, got, I need to do that too. I would yeah. never. That's why I like Timely because it tracks all the craziness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So Suzanne, what do you do? Um, well, when I, uh, up until, I'm on, I'm salary now. So we kind of agreed that uh, hours didn't need to be tracked anymore. Um, before I used a Google document spreadsheet and just did it myself. I don't know. It just, 
well, that was way easier for me than any app or anything. Because honestly, I remembered the spreadsheet, but I would forget the apps. I did um, download Timely yesterday to play around, but the memory thing I think was like <laughs> making my computer like real like it. it <laughs> Illustrator was like, I can't, like, you know, so I really think that it kind of, my computer's on its last leg, I think, so having too many things open at once, I don't know. It scared me if it was using, like, a bunch of memory that I didn't really have time for, but, um, but yeah, I just do a Google Docs spreadsheet. That's good to know. Okay, so we only have, like, 20 minutes left, so I want to make sure we're going to do lightning round, people. So I want you to tell me, we're, we'll start in this order. Sam, you're going to start first, then Louise, then Allie, then Suzanne. What do you think makes you a good remote employee? Sam. Uh, my flexibility and like the willingness to stay up late to finish a project. And not only because like I want to get the job done, but it's what I love to do, too. I personally feel responsible for the work. Mm. I think that's probably something all of y'all have is that that is a good, that you feel responsible. Like it's on you. You're very valuable in this team. Uh, it, or it, yeah, that's how they were in class, like already. And that's what I got my vibe from you. I got, so, all right. Louise, what makes you a good employee remote? Uh, I think I'm, I'm self-motivated, um, kind of like what you're saying. And I like to do, or I want to do a good job. Um, and I have, one thing I've learned is that to ask a lot of questions and ask for a lot of feedback. So mm. all those things. Okay. Allie? Um, I'm really communicative. I like talking. I like touch and base. I, I like knowing the people that I'm working for. And that's helped me with feedback. I take feedback really well. And in a remote situation, there might be things that get lost, like between the lines, like they say one thing flippantly, and then you go with that thing and you spend four hours on that thing, but it wasn't the thing that they meant. And then you have to be able to kind of detach yourself and take that feedback and be like, well, you did say that, but it's okay. We're going to start over. <laughs> so I think that that's helpful in remote work because you're not always there to grab them and do the face-to-face -face kind of thing where it's like, look at this, look at this, look at this. You just kind of, you know, so. So yes. really I prepared you in my classes to, to be like, <laughs> Suzanne's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you were confused and yeah. right what's going like, on you know like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's going on and then also it's like you said to do you said put make it pink well <laughs> I didn't like that so right <laughs> I felt pink that day and I mean I think that's I think that's a good thing um in remote work is to and then also to to care about your job in general. And it's like, yes, you could just bill for those hours and maybe it's a 40 hour work week, but if you have to put in some more, you have to put in some more. So mm -hmm. what I'm Give hearing is caring. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, but I know that because there are some people who just don't care. They're like, ah, whatever. Right. Okay. Um, Suzanne last, what makes you oh. a good em remote employee? Yeah. I think just like open communication and, um, and just being trustworthy um, is huge. And obviously that's kind of something that like you have to work towards. But I think that in the beginning, I was very open um, with Dustin and um, probably too much, but and on all levels of my life. But that just me like that, you know, I think helped him understand that like, I'm here to do a good job like this is me i think if you i think Allie pointed this out earlier you know if you're just open and you're just like kind of um let them know who you are from the beginning it's easier to trust somebody um because at the end of the day this is some people's you know livelihood and businesses that they're inviting you into um and you just have to it's like inviting somebody in your home you know you don't want to invite somebody you can't trust for sure okay oh your cat <laughs> like you can't oh, trust sorry. her <laughs> let me out <laughs> that wasn't my cat <laughs> it was sam's cat yeah maybe. yeah <laughs> he usually makes an appearance and crosses across but he's got a standing desk now so the cat's like yeah. let me out <laughs> can't jump that high <laughs> 
He's very vocal. He is. I love it. All right. So I want you to raise your hand. Oh, here he comes. Oh, look. <laughs> What's his name? Little. It's actually a little girl. Well, so her name was San from the movie Princess Mononoke, if anybody knows that. But yes. Her nickname Wait. just became Little. I have a little girl cat. My cat's oh, name is Little Girl. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, no way. <laughs> yes. You guys should work together. I know. <laughs> That's a crazy question. Right. I want you to raise your hand if because you I see you all together. I don't know if you see so if you and not everybody in any not anybody in the chat can do this, but the five of us can do this in the upper right hand corner. There's this thing called gallery view. You can click that and then we're like the Brady Bunch. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I want you to raise your hand if you think you are a self-starter. Look at that, people. That's all five people. Are we gonna I'm gonna say, say no? I'm, what? <laughs> are we gonna say no? I don't know. Yeah, some people aren't. Some people back to the trustworthy thing, yeah. Yeah, amen. Okay, raise your hand if you are a people pleaser. Raise two hands. <gasps> all of us. <laughs> oh, oh look, Louise is like if I had a third arm. Yes. I totally, totally get that. Um, all right, raise your hand if you have, it's really not helpful if you can't see us. So I'm so sorry for the people who are listening. Um, <laughs> I am telling you who's raising their hands. Um, and I'm not lying. <laughs> Do you have a consistent side project you're working on? Yeah. Okay. That's all, everybody <laughs> but Allie. <laughs> <laughs> shame i do have three jobs though so that's right that's right so we're gonna that let you amazing. have a pass there <laughs> sam says that doesn't mean anything <laughs> no i said that's amazing <laughs> no excuses that doesn't mean anything <laughs> no that's not what i said that my that's what I project heard. is like just trying to sleep and live my life <laughs> all right um, raise your hand if you like turning work off when you've done your eight hours. What? No, it's okay. You can like to turn it off. I'm, but it's not the eight hours, but I, whenever I do turn it off, it's a good thing. Okay. So, so one of the things Louise talked about this, about work-life balance and having, because you're at home, it, um, it's really difficult to step away. I have a huge problem with this, uh, because my office is in one of my rooms in my, in my house. But I have a husband that is there and gets, makes me walk away from that room. And then I sneak back. No, I'm just kidding. That <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's really surprised. important either to get out, have that class that um, <laughs> Mark says he doesn't even work remotely, but he never manages to turn it off. And I think sometimes it's always in our heads. It's always in our brains. But Louise, do you think you struggle with this? more than maybe most people and why um i think so because i like what i do so mm -hmm. i just and if i have an idea and it's not during my working hours i don't want to wait like i'll i like to act on something mm -hmm. whenever i get the idea instead of waiting you know till the next morning to start on it so i think it's more if i have to be like really mindful about how much i'm working in order to like not overwork myself or get burned out so it's always a struggle because you've done that yeah mm -hmm. Okay, so Mario says he does, has a hard time turning it off as well. Okay, so this is back to building trust. We have just like 10, 11 minutes left. I think that building trust is one of the hardest parts of working remotely. Um, I do think it's really important that you're open and you're honest, but it's hard when you haven't ever met them, right? So Sam, I know this isn't exactly, but uh, when you, well, you recently you have been working for Karina for eight months and then you went to Portland mm -hmm. and you got to meet her in person. Why was that such a, um, cause you said now things are different when we're meeting, mm -hmm. like not awkward yeah. now, like it's better. Right. <laughs> yeah. Communication is just kind of like streamlined. It's like we say sup instead of like, how are you doing today? Like mm -hmm. how's your workload? You know, it's just a lot more, more comfortable with each other. Okay, I like that. Okay, so Suzanne, you have a special you have a special story. And I don't know I know the story, but I want you to tell the story because I think that, you know, you were working I can't remember I know you're working for Dustin, but I don't remember if you were I think you were I don't know. You have to tell me. Mm -hmm. We were at Creative South. Um 
one, this is one of the things that you do as you build trust, okay, um, that you did specifically. All of you've met your employers in person. All of you have now. Um, but in the beginning, you hadn't. Uh, Suzanne, maybe you'd started working for him before you met him in person, right? Louise started her job in Spain and she got to meet everybody then. So she's super lucky. And then Allie had to wait like till the summer or this fall to go to London the first time, right? Yeah. And then I met Karina at Creative South. Oh, this past year. Mm -hmm. But you were already working for her. Yes. Okay. And we, we met and we were just like, wait, is it you? And wasn't <laughs> so then so Suzanne I want to ask you this so you had a specific thing that you did at Creative South the very first year that I think that you were working for Dustin I don't remember when this was was this a few months after you started working for him or was this a whole year after you started working for him? especially in the beginning about when you were in a you were at the conference and then you um do you know what I'm story I'm talking about no <laughs> Totally. I, I, need, I need I need more hints. I was like waiting for you to like hit an event and like click, but I have the memory of a goldfish. Like a special story. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh god. Okay, oh, so god. so there's been two times I'm pretty sure. So when you're at a conference and you're working, also there's certain things. Dustin can't turn his business off. It's actually a great time for the business, right? So he might be mm -hmm. meeting all these people. You're meeting all these people. Well, you can't just be like, Meh, I'm not doing customer service while I'm at the conference, right? Right, right. So it's about, do you, re okay. oh, she knows now. I can tell. <laughs> you see her face? I think that, I think what you're referring to is the first year. So I had met him at the conference before I started working for him um and then I guess that first year that I was working for him I was spending a lot of my time like still doing answering customer emails and stuff like that is that what you're kind of talking about yeah because if you said hey I'm not gonna do this yeah that wouldn't have gone over so well and right you actually you tell him what you're gonna yeah say. I think um I think and du I think Dustin you know think me later and I think it proved to him that I like really care because I was spending hours in the hallway putting together pen packs because we waited till the last minute to print them um so I was like stuffing envelopes and like throwing them at people I'll take these um <laughs> but I spent a good, yeah <laughs> um I spent some you know a lot of hours doing because it's, it's true just because um you're not there doesn't mean that the business stops. Um, and I think that uh, that helped Dustin realize that, you know, I care and that this is on my mind. That's why, you know, before I go on vacation or anything, I like to have everything done, you know, that I can. Like, obviously, you know, I like to go without my computer if I can. Um, so anyway, I think preparing ahead and, and just it know was, it huh, it was ahead. also like you were like i want to show him that i really care and i'm still going to get this done i'm not going to yeah. slack off i'm going to i'm going to work and i want him to know and that was really important to you because it wasn't like uh coleman made tons of cash and you could be like i'm <laughs> taking this week off but like right. it was also really important for you to build that trust with him in the beginning i think right yes Anybody else have a quick story about trust? Okay. All right. Um, do you uh, raise your hand if you feel like part of the team? Oh, that's great. Everybody but me. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I'm, I am a team. So I hope like Ashley or Sarah would be like part of the team. Um, what do they do specifically? So Sam, you had kind of a story like when y'all are, uh, you and Allie call into your thing um, how do you feel like part of the team with Karina? Uh, everyone makes a lot of jokes and it just feels like everyone's laughing like half the time, which is awesome. Very different from the other places I've worked. Nice. Yeah. Anybody else? So Louise, you talked about how, cause I was like, you have these really spread out people from all over. How do you feel like part of the team? And you said, do I need to tell you what you said? 
I don't remember what I said. <laughs> it's, it's goldfish brain over there. Yeah. So Louise said that she felt like part of the team because they all have things that they have to do. And if there's three people on her team, her small team, that if they weren't doing their job, it would be very obvious, right? And you're, you check in all the time during the day. Yeah, like constant communication on Slack. Um, but one thing I did want to add is we try, um, I guess, in our design team Slack channel and even in our meetings to talk about other things outside of work, like what we did on the weekend and stuff like that. So we're like getting to know each other, even though we're not meeting in person. Um, and I think that's really helpful, like knowing each other as a person versus just a computer screen. Well, in the office, you're going to talk about personal stuff. Like yeah. you're going to be like, man, I'm super tired because my dog kept me up late. I don't know. You know, like, so you're going to know those personal things about each other. And I think that's the easiest way to feel like a part of the team is to check in with other team members when you're not working with them. So like, do you see, I have a ton of people that I'm not working with regularly, but I, we, we message each other over Slack and we send each other GIFs. I mean, all productive. I mean, we're not just slacking off, but slacking off. But, um, yeah. So I think knowing personal stuff about other people is cause you would talk like you'd have water, what is it called when water, water cooler, cooler. <laughs> you have water cooler chat. So like you got to do that even when you're remote. So what about Suzanne? So I think you and Dustin sometimes will get on just a Skype call and you just sit there and work, but you're together, right? Yes. So, but that also has to do with, you have to at you had to ask, or you had to know that that's, he liked a lot of communication. He's a very, um, he's a people person and you're a right. people person. So it's yes. like you, it's sometimes you'll just be on the computer together. And if you need something, you holler out. And if not, yes. you're just quietly typing and working. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, well, like, I don't know. He's heard me cuss so many times. He's like, we should record this sometimes. Cause I'll be working, <laughs> you know, <laughs> cuss on the store cause something's happening wrong. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll do small talk, you know, but like working on, obviously, if, you know, we're trying to record something or typing, there's been so many times where the, like, you know, one of us is saying something and the other one's typing something and then we're like, oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I need you to repeat everything <laughs> you just said, you know, but it's just feeling like you're working with some, it's, it's like he's in the other cubicle with me for a little bit. And that I told him a while ago that like, I enjoy you know I need that sometimes because I am a people person I like love to talk to people and be like um like I'm around other human beings <laughs> so which I'm she not laughs, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what an idea <laughs> yeah right other humans it's amazing so it sometimes. seems like that might be a um it's a, a pro for maybe Louise, who's more of an introvert, but it can be, even for an introvert, it can be very, as a con for working remotely, you can feel very alienated unless those people that are on your team um, really make you feel like part of the team. So if somebody was adding into design cuts and they were working remotely, or Louise, you have this a lot, and you had kind of a, a little tip, I think, how do you make somebody else feel like part of the team? Louise. Me. Okay. I don't, I don't remember what my tip was now. I don't you have got to stop drinking in the morning, girl. Oh, no. Uh, so I think, I think it was like, uh, you just make sure that you ask them questions and you start conversations um, with them. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. That was what I was going to say. If, if I don't remember it, but, um, yeah, just, check in I, I try to check in with um my coworkers or like just see how they're doing and um so ask lots of questions things like anything normally what you would normally do in an in-person situation just try to do it you know communication wise remotely Sam so. and I need to be better about this mm -hmm. we can do this yeah <laughs> Yeah. That's a good idea that I, I think feel like sometimes we're so straight to business too. You, like it is good to wake up and your first email is like, how's it going? How was your weekend? And then if you wake up and it's like, where are these files? You're like, yeah. Yeah. you know, you just like, <laughs> just it's like what, yeah. 
So welcome I, I to my a, day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And good morning to you. Yeah, and plus, like, I think a challenge too is like reading somebody what they have typed out. If you're in a bad mood, you're gonna be like, read it in a bad mood, you know? And you're gonna be like, why are they being so sassy? And then the other person's like, whoa, well, like I wasn't being sassy at all. You know, but I just but, wanted to know what you wanted for dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's so for think, dinner? Yeah, What's that's for what, dinner? Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's why, like, face to face or hearing somebody's voice is really important mm -hmm. because um, we can re read things depending on how we're feeling that day. I also but, use a ton of emojis. It's oh, a little yeah. millennial of me. <laughs> yeah. It is. But whenever you say something and then you're just like, but okay, I will say the English, they do use this like slightly smiling face and it's usually passive aggressive. So I, I stay away from that one. Because <laughs> it's they, like oh. someone left something in the bathroom. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> is it money or something else? No, it's, um, it's usually like, why did you do this? Smiley face. Right. Okay, so Dave Co. he has a question. Why does when does hyper communication feel like micromanaging? It's a great question, mm -hmm. Suzanne. Um, I think I think the way to avoid that is to set up um, lines of communications from the beginning, uh, like expectations. So, like. I think like super recently, I wasn't doing this, but there's so much, so many things I do during the day. When I went from hourly to hourly, Dustin wasn't really seeing my tasks really. I mean, he knew I was getting things done, but he maybe ne didn't necessarily know what I was getting done. So instead of like him asking me what, over and over again, he was just like, hey, just like send me an email at the end of the day, like recapping what you did. So I think if you just set up those like, levels of communication and be like, hey, actually, will you put it on base camp, what you did today? That way, he knows, it. I don't feel like he's like breathing down my, you know, neck every, every time. Um, and yeah, I think there's a way to approach people too. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to ask, so I don't know how it is uh, for y'all. Uh, Louise, you talked about how you share your process. Um, and I think everybody has to. So is this just a, raise your hand if you screen share. You have them on the computer and you're sharing screens. Not okay. often, but. Okay, yeah. not, not, not Sam for anybody. Okay, so then, um, but you share images in Slack or how do you ask for feedback, Sam? Uh, usually PDFs, like through Dropbox or we use Envision a lot. Envision, okay, okay. He's a wizard with that kind of stuff. He's really, you're really good at that stuff. Like sketch and envision and prototyping. It's oh, cool. sketch is easy. Anybody mm -hmm. can do it. For you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so is that something else? Like you make a PDF and you drop it in Dropbox? Is, are you, raise your hand if you're using Dropbox to share files. L Louise, what are you using? Everybody else is using Dropbox. Oop. Google Drive. You use Google Drive. Okay. Yeah. Um, so real quick, let's... Uh, mm. We said share files. Okay. How, uh, uh, hmm. We're not going to do that one. Um, ah, I'm trying to like get some, the last bits. Um, all right. Can you I'm all, we're going to focus to you. What? I'm channeling focus <laughs> to you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I took my medicine. <laughs> uh, all right. Suzanne, you're going to start, then Allie, then Louise, then Sam. Biggest benefit to working remote? The, freedom. Uh, freedom. Okay. No, yeah, it's a succinct. Um, freedom's good. Flexibility is good. I like to be able to work from anywhere. So like whenever I take a trip, I don't have to worry about putting in time mm. necessarily. As long as I put in my hours, I can work from anywhere. Love that. So okay. that goes with freedom. Louise? I like the control over my time. I don't have to sit in traffic. I don't have to do a lot of things that normally waste hours. Mm -hmm. Like yes. people talking to people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Louise. Uh, okay, yes. Sam, what about you? Biggest, biggest thing? Uh, yeah, probably time, which I mean means like I get to see my family more. Like I got to hang out with my niece the other day. 
She's a little baby. It's cute. Which otherwise, that I would probably have to wait like six months to see her again when everything lined up. But isn't that I, one of the benefits? Hang on, I got one. I'm gonna yeah. share my Allie's <laughs> like. What? I thought of something. Okay, I'll hold it. You can write okay, it down. I got this. Um. So, <laughs> hey, Kevin. Kevin's here. Um. So one of the things that I think is that Sam can get a job in Minnesota and work for somebody mm. in Portland. I think that that's a benefit of our industry. And luckily, I mean, but that's something that I love that I can actually do work for somebody in Nashville or somebody in Denver. And that, that I mean, that's like, thank you, internet, you know? But mm -hmm. I think that that's one of the benefits for me of being able, because communication is key, being able to pick up the phone or know how whoever needs to, whatever their preference for communication is that I meet their needs. I'm also a pleaser. I think that's something that we I, we all have. And I think it makes you a good remote worker, whether that's a remote designer working for somebody else. Um, okay, Allie, what was yours? It's going to sound silly after you being profound. Like, I was just going to mm -hmm. say pajamas. <gasps> mm. <laughs> it's cliche, but it's so true. Like, getting up and not having the pressure of having to do anything to make yourself look like a human. Like, you can just show up and put in your work and you don't have to worry about also right. talking to you when you drink. Okay, so, so how many of you regularly wear your pajamas to work? <laughs> I wear pajamas everywhere. I wear Crocs everywhere too. <laughs> I mean, I, would, I don't wear clothes that I would normally wear in an office setting. I wear like right. t-shirts and jeans maybe, but I find if I work in my pajamas, I feel really crappy. <laughs> like I just like don't, <laughs> do anything like my whole schedule i don't know i just don't. i don't know how you wear real pants though like why? I... <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll talk about that after this goes okay so so one of the things i wanted to kind of bring to people's attention is if you are looking for you're thinking hey how do i find somebody who works remote so can you kind of turn the tables and say what would you tell them um that they needed to ask a remote employee that now it's coming from the boss right now you're the boss you're hiring somebody one thing i know i would ask i remember when louise was doing some work for me and her computer was like a grandma computer <laughs> i was like uh could you maybe do that on my computer because i think it'll be faster like that's one thing i would ask do you remember that mm -hmm. louise it was like yeah, super that poor computer uh, <laughs> i was like uh this is taking too long that should take like 15 minutes and it's taking four hours with louise she's like racking up the time Diane. <laughs> <laughs> making money um but she uh but i think that's one question i would ask and i think that that should be as an employer I want to know how old your computer is and how uh, efficient it is and how, because if that's something I have to purchase for you so that you can work better and faster for me, I think that's really worth it. What would y'all say? Uh, Allie, you go first. I think we've all talked about time flexibility. So that would be the first question I'd ask anybody is like, how flexible are you with your hours? Will you work past a certain time? Are you willing to work weekends mm -hmm. if we have to meet a deadline? And like, of course, you don't want to just, you know, work them to death. But those are the things that you need to know. I think that's one of the most important things. And, you know, like, how are you with feedback? Are you communicative? Or when I slack you, are you going to respond immediately? Like, you're on it? Or is it more of like an email thing where I might be waiting for a while? And just so you know, mom slacks like this program on the computer that people talk to each other in. Not like this, but it's like just writing back and forth. Like and they can old share pictures. AIM kind of thing. Yeah, kind of. My mom wouldn't know what that is. Yeah. Um, AOL, instant messenger. Okay, so uh, Louise, what about you? Um, Allie hit on a lot of the ones that I was thinking, but um, one that I think is important um, is are you okay with having um, a certain number of set working hours? Like it's hard if you don't know what hours somebody's gonna be online. So we have our hour working hours set in like Slack and Google Hangouts and stuff. So you know when somebody's gonna be online. But if you don't have them set, then you don't know when to communicate with anybody. So mm. um, I, I think it really depends on if you're a contractor or full-time, but um, if you're a contractor, do you, are you okay with having set hours? That's good, that's good. Uh, Sam? Oh, geez. Uh, like, can I trust you? Like, are you self-motivated? Stuff like that, you know, since I won't be there constantly you, over your shoulder. But like, how do you think you 
got that across. I know how I trusted you, um, and I didn't know you. Uh, I think by doing all my personal projects, maybe. Yeah, and also that you were just really very passionate about design, and you were also mm. willing to make a sacrifice. And I think it's just like Suzanne at Creative South making a sacrifice, um, Allie making a sacrifice to get up early so she has more time to work with her London people. You know, like um, Louise sacrifices and you sacrifice too, Sam, by learning. Cause you're like, okay, mm. when I'm in downtime, you use that down. It's not like, well, I've got another two, three hours this week. I'm just gonna eat Twizzlers and play with my cat. No. <laughs> You like, I'm going to get another Skillshare under my belt, right? Mm, yeah, which is awesome that that's like part of the low priority list. Yeah. And Louise is learning UX UI on the side so that she can do more work and transition into that. But it is something you kind of have to do on the side. And you, she has a mentor and that's the Australian lady, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's been training me on product and web design, so. That's All right, so last question that's a raise your hand question. Um, would you raise your hand if you would want to continue for the next five years working remotely? Not necessarily at the same place, but you would if, if, if design cuts went up in smoke tomorrow, would Allie, would you look for another remote position? You raise your hand if you would look for another remote yes. position. Oh, that's everybody. Okay. Remote till I die. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. what is, this is the last question for everybody. Thank you guys for hanging out. Um, so what is the one piece of advice that you would tell someone who wants, so I know when somebody says to me, oh, well, I really, I'm really looking for a job, but I'll take remote if I can. They don't say that in those words because that would be a clear, huh, you, not remote's not for you. But if somebody says to me, oh, you know, I think that I really want an office setting because I want to be around people and I'm a really uh, big people person that that would be a, uh, hey, remote's not going to work for you. Like what kind of things would you tell somebody that they needed to be besides the things that we've talked about already? Do you have anything else that you would give them a piece of advice that has helped you to be successful in this? Um, I think in the beginning, it's, the work to balance life or the work to life balance is huge in the remote because I'm probably like in between an introvert and I forgot the other one. Extrovert. Just goldfish. Extrovert. Yeah, man. Whoa. Okay. So <laughs> I'd say I'm an ambivert. I remember that term, but, um, so sometimes oh. it's like, you need to have other things going on in your life that kind of balance out the remote life. And I think that's like the biggest piece of advice is like, look, and I think it's just good for balance in general to look outside of your job and look outside of design for fulfillment and happiness. What? Look outside of design? <laughs> I mean, for Hang some people, Diane, Allie. maybe. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. I hear you. Clearly my mom called you earlier. <laughs> Suzanne, what about you? Um, I forgot the question. It was about, about, sorry, sorry. Um, what, would I, you, what advice would you tell somebody? Oh, oh hey, right, I think I right. want to, I want to work remote. And then you'd be like, well, let me tell you, do you do blank? Yeah. I think um, a lot of people get like working remotely um, confused with like the freedom to travel. Tra like I want to work remote because I want to travel a lot. But if you have a set amount of hours that you're working, that doesn't always make sense like together like i went to i was able to go to asheville a day earlier than i was going to but i had to be in coffee shops for eight hours you know so i mean just mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you have like less work to do because you're working remotely like it's the same amount of work you just can do it from anywhere but that doesn't i mean you're not gonna go to you know uh Mexico and like spend two of your days there working like what's the point of vacation so like remote and travel don't always go hand in hand you mm -hmm. do have that freedom too but um but I think people get that mixed up in their head a whole lot 100 mm percent -hmm. yeah for sure Sam uh yeah I would 
say like deal with yourself now uh i can't remember who said it a lot of people probably have but like kill the arrival so for me i guess i kind of thought like oh this working remote as a graphic designer like this is gonna be it but then you still have to like wake up and deal with yourself in the morning which is kind of weird so i don't know that's my advice like make sure you're where you want to be now and then just like keep going up from there if that mm. makes sense mm -hmm. louise last one um, yeah, I think it, it kind of goes back to my interview question too. You really got to know what you're looking for and like know your personality. Like if, if you don't like working alone in a room by yourself, you're not going to like working remotely. Um, or if you do, like you get more work done that way, then you'll like it. Um, and you know, maybe a good way to like test the waters is to take on a couple freelance projects and, you know, try that. Um, but I, I knew a hundred percent that I was going to like working remotely. Um, and the jobs aren't, aren't hard to find. Like I found my job on, on dribble. They're out there. So if you're interested, they're out there. Right. Sure. So I know how y'all found your jobs, but just tell them. So Allie. Through word of mouth. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. it was from Diane. It was from connections. And like, and then Sam, you just emailed me. I didn't know you, right? Yeah, I was like, oh gosh, I hope she responds. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> yeah, um, which was awesome. And then Suzanne, it was yeah. just I introduced you. Yeah, you introduced me to Dustin. No, I knowing. So basically, if you want a job, just get to know Diane. No, but I think I think it all goes back to like just um, letting having enough people know how you work and what kind of person you are even like personality is just as important sometimes as how, what kind of work you're doing. Um, I think so. So I definitely, it's not, so I wouldn't say you need to call me, I, but, just kidding, just, but I do have that recruiting. I have that recruiting creatives and I try, but here's yes. what I, what doesn't, here's not the people I'm not trying to match. I'm not trying to match, uh, established uh designer that's worked for 10 or or maybe not even five years right i didn't place louise um louise found hers on dribble so but there's you know it's the people you know are going to get you jobs and so it's the people that you were in class with or the people you hang out with so like sam if you don't have a good um crew that's designers then you need to establish that i think like it online you can have friends like uh i mean we have these people that are here right now minus my mom everybody else is a great person to know and connect with in design no offense mom right um but like i think that you you get to know these people and then you start one-on-one -on -one conversations with them or dms and then you do a call so that you get to know them and that you then when you need something or you're looking for someone, then they can, you can start spreading that out and having that reach. And it is the people because you know, these are people that you trust and our industry is very, it's not like accounting where it's just a yes or no. There's a lot of subjective and you kind of have to know if it's a right fit. I think that uh, Dave Co. he said um, this, he was like, assess the work, um, he says he hires by one assessing the work two seeing if it's a personality or cultural fit three if the software or hardware fit four trial on a small part of a project i love that idea five a bit larger piece of the work and then six is a short list on the freelance roster as you go for specific style of work and i think that that you know for for people who are looking there were things that i knew because I knew Suzanne and I knew she was a good writer and I knew she was very organized. She would be great with Dustin and with Allie, she was just starting out. So she just needed to get her feet wet. And so I would tell anybody this, you, your first job is just your first job. Your first job is something you have for a year, year and a half, and then you should move on unless you continue to get challenged. Because if you're not getting challenged in that job, um, or if there's not a place for you to grow into, then it's probably time for you to go because you don't want to get stuck, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, but it's just, it is a lot of the people you know, not like in a bad way. I remember thinking, it's all the people you know, but it's mm -hmm. like, well, get out there and meet some people. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say even for like the, the freelance jobs I get that 
or some local. I mean, they weren't even, they were because a friend of a friend recommended me, you know, it's not, it's not, a, I think it, and, and they didn't, hadn't even seen my work. That's why I think that just being a good person and trustworthy will take you, give you recommendations. But you also have to tell people what you do. You have yes. to, you know, it can't be like, it's just like Sam on his Facebook or wherever Instagram, he's posting his side projects. His family's seeing that. I'm seeing that. Allie's seeing this. And so side projects are good. Allie, when you get a, one less job, maybe you can start a side <laughs> project. Um, but I do think it's important to have a good balance. So I wish you all luck in that. I am not going to be on the balance strength. <laughs> Anyway, I just speaking of balance, I am taking the rest of the month off. I my good friend Jason cool. Karn was supposed to be the last week of October and I had a freak out session and I said, Jason, I can't do it. I need a break. I gotta get this other stuff done. So I am taking a break. I will be back in November. I don't know what the date is, but it's the first November. That's a Wednesday. It'll be, I'll be back. I don't know who it is, but it's somebody and it's going to be great. Whoever it is. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I had to kind of, anyway, I got a lot on my plate, but I, the, some of you guys, I will see in Bend, Oregon next week. I'm doing a workshop about networking, which I think is appropriate for this group. So, uh, we have to know who's in our crew and our group, and then we just keep getting to know them better and so anyway, doing that and then I'm um, going to be on a panel about positivity. So I'm real excited uh, to go. So I will be in Bend, Oregon next week. Any, oh, I want to make sure you guys know how to get in touch with these awesome people. So Louise works at platform, just like the shoe, dot sh. Funny, sh for shoe or sh. <laughs> um, and then you can reach her on uh, Instagram at Louise king design just no s on the end of design um and then her personal website is louisekingdesign.com and then sam you can reach at sam underscore of underscore thunder dun, dun. not that part that part's just my own little i just think of it when i <laughs> when i sam of thunder with underscores in between and then you can uh check him out at sam Gable, G-A-B-L-E, design.co. And then you can also check out State of Assembly at State of Assembly on Instagram. Allie is, works with Design Cuts, Design Cuts, I don't know, C-U-T-S dot com. And then you can check out Allie at Allie, A-L-L-I-E, underscore T-O-N-E-Y, Allie Tony, okay? Allie underscore Tony. She doesn't get a, a sound effect like um, <laughs> like Sam. And then Suzanne works at retrosupply.co and you can find her at Suzanne, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-S-A-R-V-E-R, -E -E Suzanne Sarver, or retro at, uh, on Instagram at retrosupply. So I, um, I'm real, T-O-N-E-Y, and they'll all be in below. You can check me out on any channel at, at Design Recharge, and I'll see you back in November. It was another amazing episode. Thank you guys so much for being a part of it with me. And thanks for everybody who came live. Did you know that you can join live too? All you have to do is go to rechargingyou.com and sign up right under the hero image. There's a way to join the Design Recharge family. If you click that, give me your email, you will get two emails a week, one with all the questions I'm going to ask so that you decide whether you want to come live and ask your own questions. You can always send me questions and then I will get those answered. And then on Wednesdays, 30 minutes before the live recording, you'll get another one reminding you, hey, we're about to record. So then you can come live. Really appreciate you guys. I wanted to tell you another way you can support the show is through Patreon. I deliver extra content like videos that I do with interviews, part twos with people as well as there's some workbooks there's pdfs there's design challenges so if you want to join us there you can even support the show for a dollar that helps patreon.com slash diane gibbs and that's d-i-a-n-e-g-i-b-b-s